In today's video, we're gonna take a look at two bottles from the Yamazaki distillery and two bottles from different ends of the spectrum. We're gonna take a look at the most undervalued bottles of Yamazaki on the market and the world's most expensive bottle of Yamazaki that's ever been sold. So as we've mentioned, we're, this video we're talking about the most undervalued bottles of Yamazaki on the market and the world's most expensive bottle of Yamazaki on the market. And it's by no means coincidence that we've got one of the bottles that we're gonna be talking about here with us today on the cask. And before we get into that, it's, let's have a sort of a quick recap of sort of like the history of the Yamazaki, the distillery for those of the, you that don't know. Now, it was founded in 1923 by Shinjiro Tori. Now, he was the founder of the Suntory Empire. They started out as wine merchants or wine importers, and they built the Yamazaki Distillery, or Shinjiro built the Yamazaki Distillery in 1923, and that was the first ever Japanese single malt distillery. Now, it started production in 1924, and I think the first whiskey that came out was called Suntory White Label Whiskey, or Suntory Whiskey White Label. And that was reasonably well received, but it wasn't until the 1930s, 1937, when the first sort of real success really took, got going, and that was just called Suntory Whiskey, and it was called Kakubin, uh, and that was named after the square bottles that the whiskey was in, and is still in today. And the, the part of me, sort of like the, the thinking of other comparisons with that. It's very similar to the Johnny Walker bottles of the time. Through the most of the 20th century, the Yamazaki distillery wasn't really focused on producing single malt whiskey releases. And the first single malt whiskey release really didn't come until 1984. And that was orchestrated by Kaizo Saji. And he was the son of Shinjiro and he was the one that was really responsible from taking the Yamazaki distillery from being a producer for whiskey to go into blends to creating its own single malt product. Now, in 1984, the 60th anniversary of the distillery or the 60th anniversary of whiskey or the construction of the distillery, they released their first ever single malt. And the first ever single malt they released was, that's it this bottle that we've got on the cast today and it was simply called Suntory Pure Malt Whiskey Yamazaki. Now this obviously this bottle's in, in pretty poor condition but it represents what I think is the most undervalued uh, bottles of Yamazaki that are on the market today and, and, and sort of why do I think that? Well let's take a look at it in a bit more detail. On the left hand side of the label here you've got some characters, you've got two characters and these are from the Japanese kanji uh, alphabet or kanji characters now these are sort of adopted from the chinese characters and there's two symbols here one for yami and one for zaki so read together it's yamazaki now the it's interesting to note as well because these are still used on all modern bottlings of yamazaki and it was kaizo saji you know the second master distiller who designed this calligraphy so it's there's actually still today a presence of him on all bottles even though he's no longer here as we've mentioned, this is one of the first ever, or the first ever release of single malt from the Yamazaki distillery. Now, as you can see, the label is pretty worn on here, and it's on the back that we get a bit more information. You've got 750 milliliters, and it's bottled at 43% ABV. And as you can see from the back label here, this is one for the Japanese market. Now, it's interesting. Some people say that there's not really much reference of the distillery on the labels because all it says is Suntory Pure Malt Whiskey. Now, to, to westernize, and that is certainly the case, but these big, as we've sort of already described, these big kanji characters here, it spells out Yamazaki, very big and very prominent. So even though it's only called Suntory Pure Malt Whiskey, it does, you know, it is pronounced quite boldly on the label. And I don't think it was until 2004 or thereabouts that they changed the wording of the labels to call it Yamazaki Single Malt Whiskey. So, and, why do I say that this is one of the most underrated bottles on the market? Well, you know, these bottles, they only really make around between two, three, four hundred pounds at auction. And I think that's very cheap for the first ever release of whiskey that's come from such an influential and such a well-regarded distillery. Now, another reason why you should be investing in this bottle is because they're going to become more scarce. And why do we say that? Well, we get a bit of stick on this channel in the comments sometimes and in messages and especially on social media from people saying that whiskey isn't an investment and it should be drunk. And yes, I agree with that, but you can't deny that there's a certain fraction of the market, a very large fraction of the market that enjoys 
the collectible nature of bottles and the investment potential of bottles. Now, people also say we should offer tasting notes and yeah, I agree to that in some point, but that's not the purpose of this channel. If you want tasting notes, there's lots of other people on YouTube who can give you better tasting notes and from more qualified people than myself. And to sort of help them along, we're gonna open this bottle today. So there we go. So all the haters, you know what? We enjoy opening these old bottles of whiskey and we enjoy drinking them. And I'm not gonna give you my tasting notes on it because we're gonna pass this bottle around. We're gonna send it to Top Whiskies, you know. Uh, we're gonna send it to Phil at Whiskey Wednesday. We're gonna send it to Vin at No Nonsense Whiskey. We're gonna send it to Angus at Whiskey Fun. So lots of people with much better opinions on tasting whiskey are gonna be able to give you some tasting notes on this. And from the nose, it really does smell quite delicious. Now we've got an open bottle of very undervalued whiskey on the cask with us. Let's talk about some more about the Yamazaki distillery because one of the interesting things that I found out when I was researching this video is that the Yamazaki distillery actually had a cask investment program or a cask ownership program, which is sort of very current for 2021. And the casks were really relatively cheap. They were between 3,000 and 180,000 euros. Now that may sound expensive, but you know, the, the 180,000 you know, euro cask, that was a 1979 sherry butt. So at the time of it being sold, it was a 25 year old sherry butt of Yamazaki. Now these single casks, there were about 75 that the distillery made available and only about 50% of these sold, we believe. And these casks were also with the caveat that one, you had to go and have a fantastic tasting at the distillery, which I don't think anyone would ever minded doing, but also they had to be bottled by Yamazaki. And if you look on the market, if you look at auctions, you'll see the owner's cask series. Now, the average price of these owner's casks, they range from anywhere between a thousand and three thousand pounds a bottle at the moment, and they are quite scarce. So if you'd bought one of those casks in the mid, in, in the mid 2000s for sort of between three and 100, 200 euro, 200,000 euros, it would have been a very prudent move. Now, as we'll come to see slightly later, the Yamazaki distillery have always had a, a principle, it seems, of underpricing their own whiskies. Now, if 180,000 euros for a sherry butt of Yamazaki seems expensive, it bears putting that price into perspective a bit because the most expensive bottle of Yamazaki that's ever been sold, and let's just have a sip of this now, it's been in the glass a little while. It's lovely. And that's about all you're gonna get out of it from me. Like I say, we're all signing this bottle. We're all gonna be passing the bottle around and everybody's gonna be producing reviews of this. So you will probably find about five, 10, 15 different reviews of this coming shortly to other YouTube channels. And we'll try and link them all in, in the descriptions below. But like I say, the most expensive bottle of Yamazaki that's ever been sold, it was sold for around half a million pounds or around 550,000 pounds in 2020 by Bonhams. Now the hammer price with eight, what well, roughly translates from Hong Kong dollars to US dollars to 800,000 pounds for a single bottle of whiskey. So it soon puts the price of that sherry butt into perspective as probably being one of the biggest steals of the entire century. Now, the Yamazaki 55 year old, it was released to coincide with the opening of the Japanese Olympics in 2020. But of course that didn't happen. Now, what happened earlier in the year, in early 2020, there was a ballot that was opened and there were 100 bottles of this 55 year old whiskey made available. You had to be a Japanese resident in order to get your name onto the ballot. And then if you were successful, you would have to pay the purchase price of $31,000. Now, that is cheap. No matter which way you look at it, for 55-year-old Yamazaki, that was cheap because only a few years before, in August 2018, a bottle of the 50-year-old Yamazaki from the first edition, there were three editions of that 50-year-old, sold for $350,000. So they're releasing that 55 year old whiskey at $31,000 a bottle when they knew that the 50 year old, the whiskey that was five years younger than it, was selling on the secondary market for 350,000, nearly 10 times the price. The Yamazaki 55 year old, it, it was a very old bottle of whiskey at 55 years old, but it isn't the world's oldest bottle. You know, that's now held by McAllen at the 78 year old from the Red Collection. 
And it wasn't even the oldest Japanese whiskey that's ever been released because there was a 55 year old release from the Sabu Moraru distillery. I've made a complete hash of that name, but I've got a cold and I cannot speak Japanese, so, so bear with me. But there was another 55 year old bottle of uh, Japanese whiskey that's on the market. And you know what? You can pick that one up at auction for between five and 6,000 pounds. So it's an absolute steal in my mind. Now, the Yamazaki 55 year old, it was, it was bottled at 46% ABV and it contained whiskey from two different casks. The first cask was a 1964 cask and the second cask was a nine, from, from 1960. Now, the significance of 1964 is that that is the year that Japan first held the Olympics. So hence why it was released, the 55 year old was released in 2020 to coincide with the Olympics that were being held that year, which have now been canceled and are gonna be going ahead this year. Now, the first one, uh, the 1960 cask was from a Japanese Muzunara oak cask and the 1964 was a white oak cask. The white oak cask is, is, is an American oak, but the one, the words that gets everybody excited with Japanese whiskey is a word that I'm probably going to mispronounce terribly, is the Mizunara oak or Mizunara oak, and that is Japan's native oak species. Now, the name Mizunara, that translates roughly to water oak. The reason being it's got such a high water content and it makes it very very difficult to burn now it also isn't great for coopering because it's it doesn't grow straight and it's very porous so it's very hard to cooper a very sealed cask and if you've ever seen images of the yamazaki warehouses the casks on on this cask you'll hear see that the bands that go around it there's several more bands than you would normally expect to find on most of their casks and i'm wondering if that is because of the the, the difficulties in coopering those casks if anybody knows just let us know in the comments now, the Mizunaro casks are quite hard to mature whiskey in. From what I've been reading, it takes a longer time for them to open up their flavours, otherwise it becomes too aggressive. So they're normally 20 to 25 years upwards before it starts rounding the flavour out. And the reason that they became to be used is because of the, the, the shortage of American wood and American oak and sherry butts following World War II. So it was an, almost an accident that these casks began to be used in the first place. And ironically, now they're the most highly prized casks in the world arguably. The box itself is a work of art having been made from the Japanese Muzunara oak and it's also been lacquered. Now lacquering woodware and lacquering utensils has been a specialty or a, 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 an art of Japan since the Edo period and the, the lacquer is essentially the sap from the Urushi tree and it's a very poisonous type of sap that, which is extracted from the tree. It's then boiled and all the poisonous toxins you know, evaporated off and then it's painted onto a wooden box or surface. This can then be polished and then lacquered again with different colours or and clear lacquers and you get a very high mirror-like shine on it and it almost feels like plastic. So, but it's all of this, everything with this Yamazaki 50 or 5 year old, it all tied in to the, the heritage of the distillery. They were pulling in all sorts of pieces together. And, you know, the, the, the traditions of the lacquer, the traditions of the paper, the traditions of the braiding on the, on, on, on the seal around it. And the release price is almost an honourable release price. You know, I think we find it hard to understand in the West, sort of like the tradition of honour in a way, because all we sort of want to do is buy and flip. But the honour there is to sort of like, it was Yamazaki and Suntory knew that this whiskey was being underpriced at release. They had to know it was underpriced at release, but they priced it at what was a fair and honourable price. Now, if people want to be dishonourable and flip them at auction and make hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of profit, which is absolutely fine, but I think those people will have fallen out of favour with the distillery and probably won't be getting hold of any more releases in the future. So there we have it. We have two bottles of Yamazaki from either end of the spectrum. We've got what I would argue to be one of the most undervalued bottles of Yamazaki. And this is the, you know, the Yamazaki 12 year old from the formative years of the distillery from the 1980s. And then you go all the way to the most expensive bottles of Yamazaki, which are the 55 year old that were sold for just over half a million pounds in 2020. Now, as we've mentioned, this bottle is gonna be going around a lot of different whiskey reviewers online. So if you want to find out what this whiskey tastes like, be sure to check out Phil at Whiskey Wednesday and Vinit No Nonsense Whiskey and lots of other people as well. And if you want more history about the Yamazaki distillery, we've got a very comprehensive blog. And if you're looking to collect or buy any bottles of Yamazaki, please get in touch with us because the bottles that we get almost certainly never hit the website. They sell to private collectors before there's a chance to go online.